Hi, I'm Zayed. Hi, I'm Jody. And I'm Max. We're Team A and we'd like to welcome you to our presentation on performance-based pay systems. We're going to discuss the effects of these systems, whether or not they lead to higher employees, motivation and productivity. We'll also identify other issues that can affect motivation and productivity, both positively and negatively. So, what is a performance-based pay system? It is known as incentive plans, provided as a reward for achieving targets, is given in recognition of past efforts. The purpose is to motivate employees to achieve targets for personal benefits. It is not guaranteed if the target isn't met, meaning no bonus will be given can be paid to individuals, groups, or whole organizations, can also be paid by commissions, piecework, or bonus payments. Okay, so now that we know that it's a way of measuring performance, how can that performance be measured? One of the most common methods used by organizations to measure performance is called a balanced scorecard. Established in 1992 by Robert Kaplan and David Norton, the Balanced Scorecard provides organisations with a way to establish strategies to measure performance across the business from four perspectives. Financial perspective is based on cash flows, profits and other financial goals. Customer perspective is what is important to customers and if their needs are being met. It is usually related to cost, quality, time and service. Internal Perspective relates to performance by all employees, examines how behaviour and activities are conducted in order to allow the business to adjust procedures to achieve the best outcome for all. Innovation and learning is how well does a business adapt its strategies and product to evolve and stay competitive in the market. As with any system, there are pros and cons when utilising the balanced scorecard. It allows organisations to become more effective and efficient due to focusing on the overall business, allowing issues to be addressed and strengths maximised. According to Papa Lysandris et al in their 2004 study, this was the case for the software development company where the introduction of the scorecard increased employees' motivation and morale. However, Kaplan and Norton also determined that if not used correctly and adapted to the specific needs of the organisation, the balanced scorecard could result in a complicated process with irrelevant decision making. In a report by Arne in 2001, it was revealed how the, they found the continuous process of measurement tracking and strategy review to be time consuming and tedious and questioned the long term benefits. An organisation needs to decide what they want to measure and what the cr criteria needs to be met. What needs to be measured? Is it employee behaviour? Are the results that they achieve or the methods they use? Who needs to be measured? Individuals, teams, departments, the whole organisation. How long will the measurement period be? Monthly, quarterly, biannually or annually? How will the reward be paid? By commission, bonus, piecework or some other way such as profit sharing? All measurements are usually determined on the type of work involved, including whether it is routine or a once-off project and also can be industry specific. A good example is a sales team. Each individual salesperson receives a commission for every successful sale they make. However, if they reach a specified target by the end of the month, they will also receive a bonus payment. If all members of the sales team achieve their target for a three month period, then the whole team receives a quarterly bonus as well. Performance-based pay systems are supported by several academic theories such as agency theory, reinforcement theory, expectancy theory, and equity theory. As they demonstrate, there can be significant benefits for an organization, including things such as retaining top talent within the organization, as well as increasing worker motivation, so long as the benchmark set by the company is achievable and the reward for the employee achieving this benchmark is met with an acceptable reward. The basis of agency, agency theory revolves around the relationships created between the principals and the agents. When talking about a performance-based pay system, the agents in this case would be the employee, while the principal would be the manager or supervisor. According to Linda Stroh, the assumptions of the agency theory are that agents are motivated by self-interest, therefore principals can motivate agents by controlling their incentives, i.e. incentivizing rewards for high performance. Reinforcement theory explains how people can be taught to behave in a specific way. It is often described 
in organisational settings as behavioural modification programs and it makes connections between stimulus and response. Essentially, it is believed that if a person is consistently rewarded for behaving in a particular way, then they will continue to repeat that behaviour in order to keep receiving the reward. If the behaviour is not repeated, then no reward is given. In 1964, Victor H. Vroom developed a theory through a study that suggested our behaviour can be motivated by expected results or consequences known as expectancy theory. This theory supports a performance-based pay system as long as the employee believes that there is a performance correlation between their work effort and performance, increased performance will lead to a desired reward, the reward agreed upon will be upheld, and that the reward will satisfy a need. Equity theory states employees will be motivated if their reward given matches the level effort given. Therefore, the higher the level of results, the greater the reward, and conversely, the lower the results, the lesser the reward. If the results are made known to the team, such as a sales leaderboard, for example, this concept could promote competition between employees and encourage success. However, there are also negatives attached to this theory as this behavior could incite resentment or jealousy, which could potentially break down team strength. As previously mentioned, there can be significant benefits for an organization, including the increases in employee motivation efficiency in the business and retaining top talent. With wages being some of the largest expenses for a company, efficiency is highly sought after to increase the profitability within the organization, with the age-old saying of, time is money. By increasing employee motivation by incentivizing rewards, the overall increase in efficiency benefits the organization while also benefiting the employee. One of the other key advantages when considering implementing a performance-based pay system is the increase in retaining top talent for the business. As with anything, there is almost always a negative to match the positive and, and a PBB system is no exception. We have, uh, we have identified three theories that do not support a financial reward system. These are self-determination theory, uh, cog cognitive evaluation theory, and the sorting effect. According to self-determination theory, there is a risk that employees may only perform to the level required in order to receive the reward. It suggests that people are motivated to grow and change by three innate and universal needs, and that people become self-determined when their needs for competitiveness, connection, and, and autonomy are fulfilled. According to Cherry, 2021, as the behavior becomes increasingly controlled by, by external rewards, people begin to feel less in control of their behavior and intrinsic motivation is diminished. Cognitive evaluation theory disagrees with performance-based pay systems due to its belief that there will always be a small number of employees that will perceive the system as a means to control their behaviour. This is often combined with a belief that the reason for the reward being offered is that the organisation does not trust in their ability to complete tasks and achieve targets without it. The sorting effect theorises that if rewards are not competitive in the market, then employees may leave for organisations with more attractive opportunities and rewards on offer. This can lead to a high turnover of staff, as well as loss of experience, talent and skill set. In turn, this could prove costly for the organisation in financial, operational and productive terms, due to the time required to source, recruit and train replacement staff. This may lead to increased risk taking as well. This is what occurred during the banking sector and resulted in the GFC in 2008. Bonuses were paid on each approval loan leading to inappropriate lending practices and significant financial losses. This may not consider external factors. For example, during an economic downturn, such as the 2020 lockdown, it may not be possible to achieve the same productivity targets due to factors outside the control of the employee. Does the introduction of financial rewards motivate employees and achieve higher productivity? The answer is both yes and no. Why? Put simply, financial rewards on their own, such as bonuses, will motivate employees for a limited period only, but is also dependent on other influences impacting the employee. Motivation and productivity will increase more when the financial rewards are linked to team effort rather than just an individual effort.
According to Blazevich in 2013, the reason behind this could be contributed to competition and team pressure with a reluctance for individuals wanting to be perceived as lesser contributors or, as he described it, a social loafer. The financial reward that, is, that consistently had the greatest impact on motivation and productivity levels was that of profit sharing. Studies conducted by Kraft, Blazevich, Cruz and Whitfield all found similar results and each concludes that employees with a sense of ownership creates a positive income for the organisation. However, they also shared a similar view that financial rewards alone were not sustainable in the long term uh, to maintain motivation and productivity and that the impact of other factors would be the final determination. In the 1940s, Abraham Maslow established his hierarchy of needs theory, which determined that all people have five essential needs and that each need must be satisfied before the next. The theory proposes that in order to motivate someone, it is essential to identify which of their needs is their current priority. The five needs include physiological, safety, social, esteem and self-actualization. Of the five, it is considered that the last three is the other most critical in order to maintain employee motivation. Similarly, according to Hertzberg's two-factor theory of motivation, employees are motivated by the impact of combination of hygiene factors and motivators. Hygiene factors are related to the environment surrounding a job, such as salary. Motivators are related to the nature of the job itself, such as recognition. So what are the other issues that need to be considered when determining how to improve employee motivation and productivity? As mentioned previously, there are two accepted categories of influences, hygiene factors and motivators. Hertzberg believed that these hygiene factors could prevent employee dis dissatisfaction. However, these would not serve as a source of motivation to work harder. Furthermore, things such as poor working conditions, little to no job security and poor salary are all job dissatisfiers which would make employees look elsewhere for work where they feel they would be more appreciated. These hygiene factors include job security, salary and benefits, relationships, working conditions, supervision and company policy. Supervision and relationships include a lack of autonomy, poor management or micromanagement and a lack of an inclusive positive company culture that can create employee dissatisfaction. Working conditions not only contributes to higher performance of employees, but also influences motivation of employees. Krizanovsky uh, indicated that the, the quality of the work environment has the greatest impact on the employee's level of motivation and subsequently their work performance. It is important for employees to feel their job is secure and they are not under constant pressure that they will be laid off. Job insecurities often lead to employees suffering from anxiety and loss of self-esteem, leading to decreases in job performance and motivation. Salary is often used as a motivator, but needs to be competitive in the industry and considered fair for the qualifications and experience the employer requires, as well as for the duties undertaken. The other issues that must be considered are known as the motivators. These are considered to have a far greater effect on job satisfaction and in turn, motivation and productivity. These factors include advancement, growth, achievements, interesting work, and responsibility. People are motivated by different goals related to achievement, such as mastery of performance, mastery or performance goals. According to the achievement approach to motivation, the need for achievement drives accomplishment and performance and therefore motivates candidates' behavior. Recognition motivates provide uh, motivates and provides a sense of accomplishment and makes employees feel valued for their work. Recognition not only boosts individuals' employees' engagement, but it also has been found to increase productivity and loyalty to the company and can lead to a higher retention rate. Therefore, recognition is a major factor that motivates employees to work harder and aim higher. Interesting work. While not every day is going to be interesting, employees who find their work engaging or challenging tend to achieve higher results. Uninteresting work leads to boredom, demotivation and negative outcomes. Increased responsibility. People are motivated when their responsibilities are meaningful and engage uh, their abilities and values. According to McCobby, emphasized that there is a strong correlation between satisfaction at work, which is considered an indication of motivation and feeling 
that one's capabilities are being used well. Therefore, employees who are given more responsibility will feel a greater ownership in the business and will be more motivated to work harder to make the business succeed. Promotion opportunities should always be available to employees who consistently perform well in their field of work. Employees who fail to recognize employee performance through a promotion may risk having an unmotivated employee who may just drop back to the minimum required or even the possibility of losing that employee. Having the opportunity to learn new skills is something that a lot of companies fail to realize is a strong motivator, motivating factor for employees. Learning new skills not only expands the employee's knowledge about certain skills, but can build better relationships with co-workers by having things such as group workshops. Therefore, after analysis and subsequent discussion, our team has determined that while the introduction of a financial-based pay system can have a positive effect on motivation and productivity, in the end the result is only temporary and in the long term it cannot overcome the impact of non-financial influences. Thank you again for watching our presentation. We hope you found it informative and interesting.